Here are some worrying statistics for you. Nearly one in five patients in the EU claim to have experienced a serious medical error in hospital, and one in ten say they've been prescribed the wrong medication. How much should we trust medical authority? Medicine has never been perfect, and, uh, and, and, and neither are humans, of course. There's always going to be human error. But are these figures much higher than they should be? To discuss these questions this afternoon, we've got a panel with a wide range of expertise and a diverse set of views, I understand. David Healy, on my far left, is Professor of Psychiatry at Bangor University, and David has published extensively on psychiatric drugs and the pharmaceutical industry, including books uh, such as The Antidepressant Era and Pharmageddon. Palavi Bradshaw is a doctor and a senior, senior medio legal advisor at the Medical Protection Society, which provides legal support and advice for healthcare professionals. And Jacob Stegenga is a philosopher of science and medicine at the University of Cambridge. And Jacob is the author of Medical Nihilism, which takes a skeptical view about the effectiveness of modern medicine. Is medical authority to be trusted? or should we turn to intelligent technologies? So I'm going to ask each of you in turn to, to talk about that for about three or four minutes, starting, Jacob, with you. Okay, thank you. So I want to start by noting that this question is a false dichotomy. So we could answer no to both questions, yes to both questions, or no to one and yes to another. So should we trust medical authority or should we turn to intelligent technologies? Those questions are independent and they should be treated independently. So we're gonna talk about technologies sort of towards the end of the debate. So let's start with medical authority. Should we trust medical authority? What do we mean by medical authority? Do we mean the clinician in the moment at which you go to the clinic and you get diagnosed and perhaps prescribed? Do we mean the uh, regulators that are um, the sort of real authorities in, cl in clinical work? Do we mean authority in the literal sense of the authors of scientific articles? So we're going to get different answers to the questions depending on, um, depending on how we understand authority. In a basic sense, uh, some of you who are just at my talk, you might be surprised to hear me say this. In a basic sense, I want to say, yes, we should trust medical authority. Um, if you're ill, and you visit the doctor, chances are extremely high that they know more than you do about what you're suffering from and about what's going to help you. Um, so of course there are better doctors and worse doctors, um, but on the whole, um, the doctor is going to know better than you and you should, you should listen to them. So yeah, you should trust medical authority. Now, there's a pernicious movement in our society to doubt expertise. Right? So we see this in all sorts of domains of life. And you know, most prominently today, we have figures like Trump who denounce expertise in this kind of post-fact, alternative fact era. So, so if, you s if one holds the view that we should not trust medical authority, you run the risk of being aligned with these dark forces of evil, these anti-experts. And we ought, uh, we, we, we ought to avoid that. So you know, the, the title of this debate is your life in the balance. And it's not just your physical life in the balance when we're talking about should we trust medical authority, it's your political life, right? So, so if you just start denouncing authority, expertise, then you run the risk of um, being aligned with the Trumps, and none of us want that. Okay, so you should trust medical authority, sometimes. If you are in a cycling accident and you're bleeding out on the side of the road, you better trust medical authority. If you are born with type 1 diabetes, you better trust medical authority. When you're, you're a parent of a child considering getting a vaccination for your children, you better trust medical authority. But on the other hand, if you have high cholesterol, a malignant cancer, mysterious pains, depression, there I'm not so sure. For those kinds of illnesses, physicians can't do much for you. But they're trained in really rigorous ways with the mentality of intervening. And we as patients hope for the best for ourselves. And so we want an intervention. In those kinds of moments, should you trust your doctor? Should you trust medical authority? No. So that leaves us in a kind of perplexing dilemma. I mean, on the one hand, we should trust medical authority for reasons that I just went through. We don't want to be aligned with the dark forces of evil. We don't want to be Trump anti-experts. But on the other hand, we have really good reasons to doubt medical authority. And this is a deep and difficult question. Thank you. 
Um, Pranavi. Well, I'm a doctor. You're all going to say, oh, of course, you're going to defend doctors and say we should trust a medical authority. Um, but I think the important point of this debate is, has already been raised. It's not an either or here. We've got medical experts and we have technology. And I think doctors are embracing that uh, and using it as an adjunct. But when I talk about medical authority, I am talking about the clinicians that you go and see. And I would suggest that most of the time, these are highly trained expert doctors who are there to help you. They're not there to you know, purposely harm you and they'll do the best for you. And I think what we need to also understand is when we're going to a doctor, is it simply clinical expertise that we are looking for? And I think a lot of people will say yes, but there'll be a fair number of people who will also think, well, actually, why am I going to see the doctor? Not only do I want them to be a clinical expert, but I want them to be empathic and compassionate. And we know there are studies that show that doctors who show compassion, their patients have better outcomes. Now, that demonstrates to me that we can't just see uh, artificial intelligence and new technologies as being the panacea and we can't forget that. And as I say, we're already embracing new technologies. Um, I understand that you know people will be skeptical in certain areas, um, for example, as well with Big Pharma. But then what is the alternative? Do we entrust artificial intelligence? Do we trust people like IBM and Google? Do we leave them to be basically in control of our healthcare? Surely it's much better to have individual doctors and nurses who genuinely care about their patients and have their best interests at heart. Do we really trust those kinds of companies to be doing the best for us as patients and us as a nation and for the NHS? I have my doubts. Uh, also, we would be sharing out in, you know, confidential information with them and we already know uh, how some of those big companies treat our confidential data. So again, those are issues that we need to think about. And ultimately, uh, medical authority and doctors in general do act within the law. They are ethical, they are highly regulated, and they do what's best for us as individuals. And I would suggest that there is no real alternative. I think suggesting that there might be um, is foolhardy. We're, we're too far away at the moment from relying on anything else. It's the best we've got. Uh, it's lasted us for many millennia, and I genuinely think that we still should be trusting in medical authority. Patients obviously have more information now, and it's absolutely right that people take control of their medical information and about their health conditions. And we know about 50% of patients before they go and see a doctor will have Googled their symptoms. Now, sometimes that can cause a challenge, but some, you know, it's good that people are being interested. Uh, and I certainly think that we need to be taking more initiative with our own health uh, and asking the questions. And ultimately, doctors won't impose their views on you. It's a two-way street. We need to have a dialogue and a discussion. And ultimately, that's what autonomy is about and patient autonomy. And doctors respect that. So I think at this moment in time, it's the best thing that we've got and we have to trust in medical authority. Thank you. And David. OK, um, in the last few years, Life expectancy in the United States and the UK and France and Germany has begun falling for the first time since we began collecting data. You shouldn't trust doctors. The authority they may have had, that may have worked for us up to 10, 20 years ago, isn't working anymore, and they're responsible. They need to, I mean, they're paid a lot of money, educated well, they need to carry the can. They used to use the medical model, which I agree with, and they used to use it to make sure they didn't over-treat people. But 50% uh, of people over 45 are on three or more drugs. That's polypharmacy. 50% of people over 65 are on five or more drugs. This is probably the reason life expectancy is falling. The human body is not made to take three drugs chronically or five drugs chronically. It's made to possibly survive a week or two of an antibiotic. Uh, it can maybe survive a few months for an antidepressant, but being on these drugs for longer is not a good idea. Being on multiple drugs for longer is an even worse idea. In terms of the ethics and things like that of doctors, well, you know, 100% of the literature for any drug that any of you are taking here in the room is ghostwritten. The people whose names are on the, all, I mean, sort of the word uh, author was hinted at as a component of the word author. Uh, 
authority. Well, actually, the authors' names on the authorship lines in the BMJ and the New England Journal of Medicine, they aren't the authors. They haven't written it, and they don't have access to the data. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.